Hi lovelies! So a couple of weeks ago I introduced you to this little beauty which is my Lyra Dory um, and I quickly showed you the inside. So obviously it's a fabric faux dory and I've got some inserts inside. So this one I'm using as my sort of project life type thing, writing down all the bits and pieces that happen day to day and then this one in the back I haven't started this yet because this is for November but this is it's got sketchbook paper in and I'm going to use it for the DND challenge which is Dawn Nicole Designs challenge so every day you either letter something or you sketch something so that's at the back and then I've got a little pocket that I've clipped in here that I just made out of some scrapbook paper and then I've got some extra um, bits and pieces from the Amy Tangerine collection which I just keep in the back. So I showed this to you guys and then I had a few questions about my inserts because obviously like I've just said I made my own um, and there were a few questions as to how I did that so I thought today I would give you a bit of a tutorial. Um, off to the side here, maybe here um, I've just written down a few measurements um, just so I can give you those as we go along and uh, I will post the measurements in the comments down below as well. Um, just one thing to bear in mind, my uh, traveller's notebook is an extra wide one from Lyra & Co. So um, this is uh, 14 centimetres wide whereas a regular notebook is only 12 so you've got to take a couple of centimetres off. Um, so the insert that I will make will be for the extra wide, which is mine, because obviously I want to use it. Um, but I will give you the measurements and how I would cut for a regular size as well. Obviously there are, um, you know, there's pocket, there's field notes, there's, um, you know, there's a, there's a whole range of sizes. So if you would... I'm not going to go through all of those, but they're really easy to just search online or... Um, Pinterest, I think there's like a Pinterest guide. In fact, I think I've got one on, on my Pinterest board, so I will link that down below as well. I'll just make a note of that. Pinterest sizes link. <laughs> Otherwise, I will forget and you'll be like, Emma, where is the link? Um, so yes, I'm going to get started and hopefully you will come along with me. Okay, for your insert, you will need a paper trimmer. I just have this one from Fiskars and it's got the swing out arm so you need to be able to measure to 12 inches or you don't need to but it's handy. So a paper trimmer, a ruler is always handy to have around. You will need um, a craft knife, I've got one from Tonic, um, a pokey tool, this is my like real ghetto version that is literally just a drawing pin. Um, hot glued to the end of like a pen holder. I have got a tonic craft pick on order. Um, you will also need a needle, a sewing needle. Um, and if you've got like a thing that helps you thread the needle then that's always handy too. You will need some thread. I've just got this, um, it was really cheap for like a thousand yards or whatever from Amazon and it's just white cotton. I am gonna quadruple this over but I will show you that later. You also need um, paper for your cover. So I have got a selection of uh, scrapbook cardstock here, scrapbook paper. Um, so one of those will be my cover. Um, you will need a bone folder or a scoring tool. Um, if you've got a scoreboard, then uh, you will probably need that as well. But I'm just going to use the channel that's in my paper trimmer for a scoring tool because that's, you know, it's what I have. And you also need whatever paper you're going to use for the inside of your notebook. Now, I bought from the range, which is a really cheap shop here in the UK. I bought a pack of three sketchbooks for like three pounds 
and I've basically pulled them apart. I have used part of that paper as well because it's got flamingos on it. Um, I've pulled it apart and I'm going to use sketchbook paper. So this is just an A4 sketchbook that I'm going to cut and fold and use because the paper quality is pretty good. So you need your inside. I have made an insert using just normal print paper as well and that works fine that's what I'm using for my project lifestyle one at the moment that's just normal print paper um I would recommend if you can going for like higher than 75 gsm because um the print paper that I currently have is 75 gsm and I think if I was going to make more of them with just print paper I would go and get like a an 80 or 90 gsm just because it's a little bit heavier weight a little bit better quality okay let's get started uh, first of all we need a paper for the cover so um, for these ones I've literally just used scrapbook paper now um, putting it in and out of the elastic it does kind of ruffle the edge a little bit because um, obviously you want it to be tight in the elastic you don't want it to be going anywhere uh, this started off really thin and it's getting a bit chunky because I'm adding bits to it so you know I want it to be sturdy in my book um, so I would recommend scrapbook paper purely because of the way the elastic goes in um, it's gonna need to you know hold up to some use um, so I am using scrapbook paper <clears throat> um, these papers are from my latest light forever kit and I've got some Maggie Holmes Gather um, they're from Crate Paper and then I've got some Pink Fresh Indigo Hills now what I'm going to do is actually you can kind of feel the difference I know you can't obviously because it's video but the Pink Fresh is just slightly thicker and I really like this colour pink and I think it will go quite well with the pink on my notebook I know that's really sad but I kind of tie my inserts in with the colors that are on my notebook so I've had the black and white dot and then I've got the um, black with gold dot so I think the pink flower will work quite well I know that's like OCD and I'm possibly on my own with that but um, I don't care that's what I'm gonna do so I'm going to start with 12 by 12. This is going to be my outside cover. Hey. Okay, so this is the one I've decided on. And like I said, my my traveller's notebook is extra wide. So I'm going to cut this to 20. In fact, for both, for both extra wide and regular, you would cut this to the same um, measurement. Because they're both the same height. It's just obviously the extra wide has extra width um for this i am going to be working in centimeters um usually with scrapbooking and everything else i work in inches because it's a lot easier um for this just because the measurements need to be a little bit more precise um i do use centimeters so this first one i'm going to put cut to 20.3 centimeters so the reason for that is the height of the notebook is 21 centimeters which is here okay I like to allow for and I'm going to show you in mine now I like to allow for the ring placement so the 21 centimeters let me just get my ruler I believe is from the top of the ring no it's not so the 21 centimeters is the width of the fabric um, not including the seam allow allowance okay whereas I like to go from the rings basically so from the top of the ring to the top of the ring it's about uh, to the top of this ring to the top of this ring it's um, it's about 20.3 centimeters so it just it gives you a bit of space at the top I don't know whether you can see that just gives you a bit of space and means it just cuts a little bit less on the notebook as far as I'm concerned anyway someone out there might disagree but there we go so i am cutting mine to 20.3 boom done okay then what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in my scoring tool and turn this over so this is my inside piece 
and I am going to score for the extra wide at 13 and a half centimeters. For a regular, you will score at 11 and a half centimeters. Again, I will put all of this below. So the actual width of the um, faux dory is 14 centimeters. I like to leave just a half centimeter just for a bit of overhang and to allow for when it closes. So I am going to score at 13 and a half. So making sure that that's straight. 13 and a half on here. And score. Okay. That's all we need to do for that for now. So I'm just going to fold that over just to reinforce that score. Make sure it folds straight. That's it and just crease that down okay there is obviously the overhang here i am going to leave that for now so we've done the front cover i'm going to set that aside next we're going to work on the insert or the inside paper now like i said i'm using effectively a3 because it's a4 folded in half um, but what i'm going to do is i don't want this fold so I'm going to cut, and in fact this is quite a lot of paper, so I'll pop that in and cut that to, what's my height, 20, Twenty point three. That's on the extra wide and the regular, the 20.3. So that will be the height. And obviously that leaves a little bit more than A4 on this side. So again, 20.3. This bit we don't need so that'll go in the bin okay so you're going to do that to all your sheets of paper I'm going to do that and come back to you in a minute okay and I'm back sorry if my voice sounds a bit weird I turned the camera off and had a complete coughing fit so these are all now cut to 20.3 centimeters so now your next job is to go through and score them all so if you're wondering how many pieces of paper I have here let me just count them. One, two, three, four, ten. Okay, so I have ten sheets of paper folded in half. That's 20 or 40 front and back, which is pretty good, I think. Um, it depends. When I did print paper, I did get about 30 pages in there, so 60 front and back. It depends on the thickness of your paper, I think, for sketchbook paper. Um, 10 sheets folded, so 20 pages or 40 front and back. I think that is pretty good going. Um, you've got to remember it is only scrapbook paper that's holding it all together. So, yeah, take it easy. Um, so, yes, your next job is to score them all. So, do a few at a time because you want a good score. And we are going to score at... 13 and a half for the extra wide or 11 and a half for the regular so 13 and a half is there I'm just going to score it like that take it out fold it and just reinforce that score line okay so you're going to go away and do that. I'm going to do the rest of mine and we'll come back when they're all scored. Okay, I am back. I have scored all of my paper. We don't need the paper trimmer for now, so we're going to move that out of the way. So what you should have is however you've scored it, you'll have them all in booklets. You need to start, sort of slide them together so they are all in one. So they're all in one big booklet. Okay, don't worry if you see now that the pages are kind of... Um, sort of fanning out and you haven't got a clean edge that is what we need a tonic uh well not a tonic 
there are other brands available that is what we need our craft pick for or or uh no emma get your words right our craft knife that is what we need our craft knife for so just putting them all together reinforcing the fold and we're going to bring back our notebook that's going to slide ever so nicely in there okay so you can see that nothing really at the moment lines up that is fine I would much rather have it too big now and trim it down in a bit than have it too small now and realise that I've done it completely wrong. So, all we're going to do now is poke some holes. So we're going to hold that together. If you want to secure it with um, like a bull clip or a big paper clip, you can. I mean, I have one here that could fit on there. I generally don't tend to use a paper clip. I don't know why. I probably should. That does seem to work. So, yeah, you can use a paper clip or you can just hold it. I tend to just hold it and just kind of go with it. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to pierce, and I think I did, five holes. So you're going to do one in the middle. And I'm going to get a pen for this so you can see. You don't have to mark these holes, and actually I don't measure these either, I just kind of eyeball them. So I do one roughly in the middle, one kind of there, and one there. So not right at the top, leaving a couple of centimetres from the top, and again a couple of centimetres from the bottom, so about there, and then one in the middle of the two. Because we're going to pierce the holes now, and then we will sew them in a bit. So, because it's quite a lot of layers, You've just got to kind of be patient and force your, if you wiggle it a bit, when it tends to go, I mean, I'm just holding and pushing until it comes through, twisting. Okay, that's all the way through. Give it a little twist and then pull it out. That's all you need. So I'm going to do that on the others and then I'm going to come back. So I'll show you again. You just pop your pokey tool or your push pin or whatever you've got and keep twisting it, twiddling it until it comes through. It starts to poke through pretty soon. You just gotta make sure it's gone all the way through and job done. So I'm gonna pierce the rest of my holes and then I'll be back with you in a minute. And we're back. Okay, I have pierced all of my holes. So we've got five holes in the notebook ready to go. Our next step is our needle and thread. I haven't got a clue what size needle this is, which I know that really isn't helpful. I'll put it there for you. Um, it was just one that I had lying around. From my sewing machine, I do have like a thread puller thing. And I'm gonna say we're gonna go for four strands. Now I have like single strand cotton just cause it's from a reel. So what I tend to do is just pull like an arm's length off. So if I hold it, in, loosely in my hand just pull it like an arm's length away and do that four times and then I will quadruple that over so that's three and that's four I know this isn't the best way of doing it but it's kind of using what I have so I will sort of bring that back just running it through my fingers making sure there's no knots and go end to end so that's doubling it over and then through my fingers again so then I've got two ends to the one looped end and that is my four strands I realize that that really isn't the best way of doing it and if you have like the cotton skeins or skeins or however it is that you say it then obviously that is the better way of doing it but I don't have that so what I'm going to do because it's quite a few um, strands is I'm going to put my needle on the cotton threader tool thing um, and push all of my strands into there and then just pull that through okay once we have that done you should have the two loop tens at the other end, hopefully, because we will need those. So, for the interests of this tutorial, I am going to letter the holes in pencil. So, this hole is going to be A, this one is going to be B, 
middle is C, D and E. Okay, hopefully this will work. <laughs> what you're basically going to do is do a sort of figure eight. So I'm going to start in C and start from the inside. So in C and pull out to the front cover. You're going to pull all the way out and then leave a little bit of a length okay so if you want if you're holding your notebook then it just needs to be something that you can put your thumb onto because you're going to need that to tie off the thread later so from that side you're going to come back up through d okay so you're going to go down through c and up through d then you're going to go down through e you kind of do figure eight movements and this is where we realize that the paper has shifted or my hole didn't Hope properly no the paper's shifted there we go so I'm going down through C up through D down through E and then we're gonna go onto the other side and go back up through D okay I hope this is making sense to you guys <laughs> so down through C up through D down through E up through D and then we're going to go back down through C which is our middle one I'm going to just hold that thread out of the way and basically all you're doing is going up and down the holes creating your binding um, and you just want to do it a few times just because you want it to be strong you don't like you need it to stand up to whatever you're doing so down through C then we're going to start on the other side Make sure that's pulled tight. That's it. We're going to go up through B. So we're going back the other way now. If you find that your paper has shifted and you're not entirely sure why, then just go back in with your pokey tool, get it to realign, and then go up. So down through C up through D, down through E, up through D, down through C, and now we're going to come up through B. There we go. And then down through A. And then we're going to come back up through B. quite a lot of paper so don't worry if it takes a little bit to get through and then down through C now C has been like through like three times so don't worry if that's a bit tough to get it in either so down through C now I like to reinforce some of these so I'll just keep going I'll go over them until I run out of thread so I've gone down through C so I will go up through D Now if this happens, just gently pull it out, it's just got a bit tangled, and then there we go, um, and then down through E. If you don't think you've got enough thread uh, left to be able to go up and down the whole lot again, then I would just reinforce the middle ones, so go up through D, back in through C, up through B, and then back to C, um, and then that's enough, but just it's just reinforcing what you've already done basically and just giving your notebook a bit of strength so back up through D down through C this is like the fifth time through C now so again don't worry if it's getting a bit tough up through B down through A up through B and then we're back to where we started so I've gone up and down the lot twice and now we're gonna I've taken my needle off and we're gonna sort of cast off so to speak so what we're all we're gonna do is just tie a simple knot so as if you're doing your shoelaces so tie that once and then twice so you're actually knotting it and not doing a bow and you just pull that tight now if you want to do that a couple of times then you can I tend to 
I mean it's only thread it's not going to cr create too much bulk and then you're just going to snip that off quite close to the knot now I mine is quite my knot is quite loose there and if I was to do it again then I would um, make that a bit tighter but effectively that's your binding done that's your book or bound and good to go so now what we need to do is neaten up the edge okay I'll rub out the letters in a bit so what you're going to do is take your ruler and your craft knife I have tried to do this on my paper trimmer before it hasn't really gone too well um, so yeah what I'm gonna do is line up my ruler with the edge of that front cover so have it so your front cover is at the front and then you've got all your excess underneath so don't have it like that because there's no point if you do it that way you'll be able to see where your measurement is supposed to be so line up your ruler with the edge of that top front cover and then what you're going to do is it takes a little while don't try and do it all in once or all in one go is just keep running your craft knife down through the paper and you will find that it just starts to come away so that bits come away we're just going to move that out of the way you can use your craft knife just to pull it out of the way as you go if you want to it's getting on your nerves and you're just going to keep trimming so this is pretty much your notebook made I'm just gonna obviously talk to you while I'm doing this the trickiest bit to sort of convey in a video is the stitching bit so hopefully lettering them has kind of helped you to see where you're sewing um, if you've got any more questions then you know let me know in the comments and it might be that I'll need to do a blog post or something on it I mean personally I'm better as a visual person sort of watching someone do it and explain it rather than trying to read and look at the pictures um, but that's just me I mean if you're the kind of person that really does need a blog post or something that you can refer back to then fine I mean I can try the way I explained it with the letters I can sort of try and write that in the description below um, so you have got something to refer back to uh, if that is something that interests you okay so as you can see I'm just slowly getting through the layers I probably don't even need the ruler anymore because the craft knife kind of finds its own way and I'm almost there because I can feel my glass cutting mat underneath let's just move those out of the way and I think there we go <clears throat> so those bits are off and there is your notebook now personally I prefer the square edges if you want to you can round them and one thing that I always do is I always decorate my front cover so for example this one I got frames and a bow and all that kind of thing and on this one it's a doily and lots of black hearts and a little banner and some staples so I am going to turn off my camera for a second I'm going to go find some bits and pieces and then we can decorate I'll be back in a minute Hey lovelies, voiceover time. Um, the decorating of this notebook is going to be in a separate video. So just in case there are some of you who wanted to watch the decorating and not the making or the making and not the decorating, I thought it was a lot easier just to put it into two separate videos for you. So I hope you enjoyed the making of the notebook. I hope the instructions were easy enough to follow and clear for you. And if you would like to... Um, watch the decorating of the cover then I will leave a link in the description bar below and possibly a link somewhere on the screen and yeah I hope you enjoyed guys until next time bye